So, Janaki Raman, I think uh, what we should do is we should look at this uh, linearity business in a little bit more detail. Sure. And uh, maybe look at it. We have seen the experiment. Yeah. It seems like uh, something is happening. Correct. Let us start from the basics and try to attack this and learn conceptually. Yeah. Sure. And then we'll learn how it is applied to networks. Absolutely. Yeah. So we started off this whole discussion saying that, you know, the we were trying to mix two signals. We were trying to, you know, amplify them, add them alpha one yeah. v one plus alpha two v two. We were trying to get that, yeah. and then we noticed in today's, uh, you know, uh, measurement section yeah. that uh, the uh, when you change these voltages mm. for a fixed network, yeah. the output voltage seems to be some. Combination of scaling those. scaled in some 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 fashion. Yeah, correct. Correct. So maybe uh, we said that it seems to be behaving in some linear fashion. Linear. Plan. So we need to understand what this whole business of linearity means. Right. So linearity seems to suggest some sort of a straight line somewhere. Right. That's right. Okay. So in fact, I am noticing a pattern. You know mm -hmm. why? Because now that you say it is related to a straight line, right? Yeah. I remember that uh, for the resistor. Yeah, we drew the uh, let's say VI characteristic. Yeah, and we actually said it's a straight line passing through the origin because V <coughs> equals IR. Yeah, right. Right. So we said that it's some line like this, right? Okay. With its slope as R. R. So if you take a resistance R, yes, whose voltage is V, yeah, and current through the resistance is I, yes, uh, it seems like uh, it's a straight line. Maybe the circuit we built had resistors. Maybe that had some that has something to do with the straight line. Business. Absolutely, absolutely right, right. So let us look at this a little bit. <coughs> Maybe what we'll do, we'll uh, approach this in a slightly more abstract fashion. Yeah. Then we'll get down to the details of resistors, resistors and, so and all that. Correct. Okay. So we'll start with um, the abstraction of the network itself. Yeah. Okay. As some network n. Okay. Okay. So we'll say that there is some network n. Yeah. It's a block. Yeah. It has some input. Normally, in electrically, this input is a voltage or a voltage, current, right? Right. But we'll just abstractly call it some input x. Yeah. Okay. And the output is y, which is f of x. So, uh, in the circuit we were looking at, x would be this v1 or v2. That y is right. would be the vx that we were measuring across the 1k ohm. Perfect. Yeah. That's right. So I'll just note that down as well. This would be v1 <coughs> or v2. Yeah. And this would be Vx. Yeah. What we are measuring. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. It's very important to point this out. Yes. So now, um, to figure out whether the uh, network, let's say this, let me call this network N. Yeah. To figure out whether this network N is linear or not. Linear or not. Right. Yeah. We need to understand what linearity means. Yeah. It turns out that there is a um, some set requirements. Okay. For this network to be considered linear. Okay. Okay. We notice that the resistor has a straight line. Yeah. And it looks like that might be linear. Yes. Because it's a straight line. But it turns out that that's not all there is to it. Okay. Okay. So it turns out that there are two main requirements. Right. Right. So the first one, okay, is uh, uh, what happens if you scale the input. Okay. Okay. So we say that if input is x, we said output is f of x. Right. Now, what happens if I were to give the input to this network n yeah. as some a times x, where a is some real number. So, it can be positive, negative, fraction, anything. It does not matter. Okay. Uh, okay. a can be any real number. Okay. It can be positive, it can be negative, it can be an integer, decimal, <coughs> does not yeah. matter. So, of course, by definition, the output has to be equal to f of a x. f of a x. Right. Yeah. Now, if this f of a x yeah. were equal to uh, y equals f of a x, if this were equal to uh, a times f of x. Okay. So, in other words, I gave an input x, yeah. the output was f of x. Yes. If I scale the input by a certain number a, if the output also scales by the same, same number amount. a. Okay. Then you say that the network satisfies the homogeneity principle. Homogeneity principle. Okay. Okay. 
so this is still not yet linear it's just this is still not yet linear because we are just looking at scaling scaling correct right okay so this is the homogeneity principle so this is one requirement so as an example if the network n took ax and did a square on it let's yes. say it did a square if i give x i get x square as the output yes then ax would give a square, square x, x square. square and therefore that is not not linear it's not homogeneous definitely yes. it doesn't definitely it doesn't it's not homogeneous obey the homogeneity property. that is correct so i'll just write that down yeah uh, um, f of x if f of x is x squared a times x okay would give me an output which is a y equals a squared x, x squared. squared this does not satisfy homogeneity because you expected the output to be a, a times, times x, x squared, squared right so not it a is squared not homogeneous okay Correct. right okay <coughs> the second requirement okay there is a second requirement okay. the second requirement is what happens if i give the input to different inputs okay ah. okay so i am going to take the same network n hmm. let us say i gave that x was the general x yes i am going to give it a specific input x1 okay so of course the output is uh, f of x1 yeah and if i take the same network i gave it a different specific input x2 yeah i expect an output which is f, f of, of x2. x2 right now what happens if i give it this in some of these two as the input okay you give x1 plus x2 to the network that's right okay so it's the same network except i'm going to give the input as x1 plus x2 okay okay now of course the output by definition has to be f of x1 plus yes x2 exactly now if this output f of x1 plus x2 if this were equal to f of x1 plus f of x2 okay 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 you say that the network supports or it uh, obeys obeys the additive principle additive principle that's okay. right so just going back to our example suppose we had a square function yes. f of x uh, equal to x square yes if i give x1 i would get x1 square correct if i give x2 i would get x2 square correct so if this f of x yeah is x squared we'll go back to the same yeah. example so i'll call this y1 yeah and y2 y2 so y1 is is x1 squared, squared. Y2. and y2 is x2 squared Bar. and uh, this i'll call it y3 yeah so y3 is x1 plus x2 the whole square x1 plus x2 the whole squared this is not the same as x1 squared plus x2 square x2 square you have right? a 2x1 x2 which Correct. is extra that's right right and therefore this does not obey the additive, additive principle. principle okay Correct. that's right. okay this is Got an it. example of a function that does not obey the additive principle right okay you put these two together the homogeneity and the additive homogeneity principle and the additive principle together okay you say that the network is linear so linearity requires it requires homogeneity okay and additive property so you're saying that now i have to look at an input which is a times x1 plus x2 that's or right can it be a1 x1 plus a2 x2 you can look at a1 x1 plus a2 x2 okay because by homogeneity i know that if i gave it a1 x1 i would get a1 times f of x1 yes if i gave it a2 x2 i would get a2 times f of x2 the additive principle tells you that you can add a common, you can add them okay okay Great. <coughs> in fact this these two properties together you can say are put together under a single name okay you can say if the network n supports or obeys both homogeneity and the additive principle yeah you say that it obeys superposition oh okay, okay. so the combination of these two 
okay you say <laughs> that if it obeys both you say that you say that it obeys superposition so, principle so there is linearity which is one term we have superposition which seems to be another term now that's right okay so in fact by definition in electric networks you say that a network is linear if it obeys superposition because the word superposition includes both homogeneity and the additive property okay and the network is linear if and only if it obeys superposition okay so in other words now i am going to um, write this in a general form right it is exactly as what you expressed i say that if the network n yeah. has an input x the output was uh, y equals f of x yeah the network if the network is linear yeah you can apply superposition principle yes which means if x1 gave an output so x1 gave an output f of x1 yeah and x2 gave an output f of x2 yeah then if the input were a x1 plus b x2 okay the output y yeah is of course f of a x1 plus b x2 right right if the network n is linear this will be equal to a times f of x1 plus b times f of x2 that's actually maybe jumping a step right it's actually it is f of a x1 plus f of b x2 that is correct so uh, this is f of a x1 plus f of b x2 yeah this is a times f of x1 plus From b the times f of x2 principle, that's correct right? so, so in the first step we are using the homogeneity the linearity we are using the additive, additive principle. principle in the second step we are using the homogeneity right. principle so the two put together says uh, the put the two put together mm -hmm. leads to superposition right okay right. and now this if the network n is linear yeah this is valid correct this right. would be true right okay the converse is also true if you take a network and it obeys superposition you okay. try you run an experiment on your network you apply x1 find out what f of x1 is apply x2 what f of x2 is if you actually went in and applied a x1 plus b x2 and if you actually get a times f of x1 plus b times f of x2, x2. it is clear that the network has to be linear okay. it is because it is obeying superposition right 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 okay. so effectively this is what uh, you use the term called if and only if that this is, is what so both ways it is true if it is linear you must observe this correct if you observe this it means it is linear that is correct okay